Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. ATC privatization efforts fails for now. President Trump's personal pilot considered for FAA administrator. And SpaceX tries to recover another piece of Falcon 9. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's February 28th and this is Airborne Unlimited. The current effort to replace the current ATC system with a privatized organization under the control of an airline-dominated ruling board seems to have failed for now. But the path to the next flight for such an effort is already being planned. Transportation and Infrastructure Committee Chairman Bill Schuster, ATC's privatization's most prominent driving force, has apparently given up. And since he's not seeking re-election, it's going to be up to another politician to drive it in the future. With the short-term FAA extension hitting the bricks March 31st, something had to give. Schuster's not happy about it. Many, including myself, continue to believe that the air traffic control provisions of the 21st Century AIRR Act are good government reforms and necessary for the future efficiency, effectiveness, and safety of our entire nation's aviation system and its users. Despite an unprecedented level of support from this legislation, from bipartisan lawmakers, industry, and conservative groups and labor groups alike, some of my colleagues refuse to support shrinking the federal government by 35,000 employees, cutting taxes, and stopping wasteful spending. Simply put, if we get a clear and unrestricted FAA reauthorization, that should hold off most ATC privatization efforts for the term of the expected four-year reauthorization. But since this was an issue favored by the president and a number of the high-ranking politicians, the potential for a separate, more creative effort remains. After the break, Southeast Aerospace offers Part 29 ADSB AML STC solution. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Southeast Aerospace, the first company to have partnered to achieve the first ADSB STC, has announced its latest ADSB solution for the Part 29 market. Southeast Aerospace has partnered with Peregrine and Air Methods to provide a panel and remote mount fully integrated ADSB solution for a variety of Part 29 airframes. FAA STC SR00864DE has been approved to install Concord Battery Corporation's Platinum Series RG624 battery in MD helicopters 36D, 369E, 369F, 369FF, 500N, and 600N helicopters. The 85% improvement addresses increased power requirements for engine starts. Installing Concord's RG624 will result in stronger starts prolonged service life, and reduced wear on the engine. Huntington Beach, California officials say that not only was last year's air show an economic boom for the region, it was put on at no cost to the city's taxpayers. The show, which was held from September 29 to October 1st, cost the city about $169,000, which includes nearly $65,000 for police support. 
Those costs were offset by parking revenue, which came in at about $92,000 and $77,000 from the show's promoter. During the week of February 5th, Instrum Helicopter Corporation completed a successful acceptance of four Piston 280FX helicopters to Global Services and Solutions of Pakistan. The aircraft are scheduled to depart the factory at the end of February and arrive in Pakistan in March. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. One of the people on the shortlist to succeed Michael Huerta as FAA Administrator is John Duncan, who was President Donald Trump's personal pilot on Trump Force One during the campaign. Trump has reportedly told several administration officials and associates that he would like to see Duncan in the position. And while many in Washington are saying that Duncan will be unqualified to lead the agency, a source told Axios contributor Jonathan Swan that he's on the list because he's the president's pilot. But if he gets the job, it won't be because he's the president's pilot. An administration official also defended Duncan to Swan, saying he has managed airline and corporate flight departments as well as carrying startup airlines under FAA regulations and oversaw Trump's campaign air fleet. Other possible candidates include Congressman Sam Graves and Acting Administrator Dan Elwell. Elwell became FAA Deputy Administrator in June and was named Acting Administrator by Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao when Huerta resigned in January at the end of his five-year term. After these messages, SpaceX tries to recover another piece of Falcon 9. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Teros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. It appears boosters are not the only thing SpaceX hopes to recycle from its launch program. Now the company is attempting to recapture parts of the upper stage as well. SpaceX sent a specially designed ship out into the Pacific fitted with what can best be described as a giant catcher's mitt, with which it hoped to catch the payload fairing falling to Earth after the successful launch of a Spanish Earth imaging satellite as well as two experimental SpaceX broadband microsatellites. The tugboat, named Mr. Stephen, headed to the area where the fairings were supposed to return to Earth on Thursday. How did the crew know where to go? After a long supersonic fall from space, GPS-connected paracels attempted to guide the component to a specific spot on the ocean, where Mr. Stephen would be waiting. On Twitter, Musk said the fairing missed the net deployed on Mr. Stephen by only a few hundred meters. It did, however, come down in the water in one piece. Should be able to catch it with slightly bigger shoes to slow down descent, he said in a tweet. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.